this is a challenging video to make for me. Um, and you'll understand it as soon as I open my mouth and say, how can you support your midwife? I've been involved in the childbirth conversation for 50 years, as I've told you over and over again. I've attended hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of births in many, many different situations with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different care providers. And I've also been at births where there are no professional birth providers. That doesn't mean I'm a midwife. Doesn't mean I'm a doula, doesn't mean I'm a childbirth educator, it just means I'm a human being. And I chose to be at births, and families chose to have me at their births. And that's fine. So in the 70s, when birthing better, when the family started to develop it, there was not really a political movement about midwives in the United States. Midwives existed all around the world. It's just part of the maternity system. And home births did as well. So it really wasn't a question of whether midwives existed. It was a question of who midwives are. And that's where I started to feel that I wanted to scrape my fingernails down a chalkboard. So I'd spent many, many years in very diverse traditional communities. And I can tell you that there's a Conversation starts with misinformation in the West. Midwives are not the second oldest profession from prostitutes. Many, many cultures have never heard of the word midwife. They don't know what it means. And why is that? Because in developed countries and in some cultures, particularly during the European period of industrialization and before that, there were people who were midwives or whatever they were called. But when you're in a traditional community, first of all, the communities are quite small. So if you're in a village of 2,000 people, that's quite big. So let's say half the population is women. So it's 1,000 women. Okay? How many of them are children as females? Well, a bunch of them will be. How many of them are childbearing years or not of childbearing years? A percent of them. How many women do you think in a, fa in a community of 2,000 may be pregnant each year? Not very many. So you need to understand that in communities that size, not very many women had babies each year. And usually the person who attended the woman was a family member or a relative. And as I said before, in many cultures, women went off by themselves. Other cultures, they went off with women that they knew. And in other cultures, they just birthed wherever they were. And whoever was there was there. There was no profession. It's the same thing. Were there always professional potters or professional weavers? No. <laughs> Basket weavers or blanket weavers or roof weavers. They were just people who knew in the family and other people who knew in the village. So we started the conversation off inaccurately. And then we piled on to the inaccuracy. And our trust is in New Zealand. And I arrived in New Zealand in 95. And the midwifery model of care had been put in place in 1990. So I got there five years later. You can go and read the New Zealand midwifery guidelines of practice or what their beliefs are or the partnership model that's all online. So I read their little booklet on partnership. It's 44 pages long, and the word partnership is mentioned 144 times about everything. But nobody really explains in New Zealand what the partnership is. And in fact, when I and another midwife have run strengthening the partnership workshops in New Zealand, and we ask midwives, how do you explain the partnership? Less than 10% of them do. The foundation of their practice is based on partnership and less then 10% of it explain it. And those that explain it, explain it this way. We respect your choices, and what do you want of me? That's not a partnership. This is not a partnership. You're having a home birth. You've made a choice to have a home birth. And you're either having a midwife or a doula or an obstetrician, or you're doing it alone. But if you're having a midwife, Midwives since the late 70s, once Ina Gaska wrote Spiritual Midwifery, and beyond that, 
the idea was the midwife was all things to each woman, that this partnership was based on a midwife not only providing the necessary assessments and monitoring and procedures, but the midwife was going to spend as much time as the woman wanted. There was a continuity of care uh, partnership model and midwives would pay attention to the psychology and the emotion and to the woman's situation and be there with the woman when she wanted to be there. When this started to come out in the 70s and 80s, I just actually was floored. But I had seen that with many of the midwives when I had been at births in which their care had been. Now let me explain to you who a midwife is. She or he is a human being. She or he may have a family. She or he may have children. She or he may have health issues, want to be on vacation, have number of clients so that they can make a living. He or she is just another human being that you're working with. That's who a midwife is. He or she is not responsible for your life. You are. She is, or he is not going to be in your life past six weeks after the birth, or maybe 12 weeks. You cannot give up your power to a midwife, no matter how much you like her. If you have questions, you now have Google, or you can ask other people or go to Facebook forums and find out. You want to be very light on your midwife because she or he has a life and you have to stop draining it. And midwives, you have to stop wanting to be drained. And this is really important. What is a partnership? Well, as a midwife in New Zealand, which has a very strong foundational statement about childbirth, pregnancy and childbirth are normal life events that rarely require medical care. That's true, but you have to define what normal is. And in that situation, the word normal is meant to imply safe, no problem, low risk, easy with good outcome. The midwives in New Zealand attend about 97% of all births. How many women come into pregnancy with health issues? Many of them, or emotional issues, or financial issues, or social issues, or economic issues. It is not the responsibility of the midwife and the partnership in New Zealand to try to solve those problems, pass them on to other people. It's not your responsibility. So midwives consider birth and child, pregnancy and childbirth normal life events. Why are they going to school for four years? This is crazy messaging and then crazy actioning. Do I believe midwives should go to school for four years? No idea. Do I believe that childbirth and pregnancy are low risk all the time with good outcomes and that women cope and that they come into pregnancy eating well and exercising well and does that necessarily matter? Don't know. What I do know is a partnership model is based on equality of skills for the tasks at hand and those tasks are different. So there are three roles in childbirth. There is the care provider who has gone to school to become skilled, a midwife, and they're going to school to become skilled so that they can assess and monitor the well-being of the mother and baby. That's appropriate. They are not going to school to become social workers or psychologists or to just diddle their time with you when they have 40 to 60 other clients a year that they have to deal with. So they've gone to school for four years. And when the partnership models explained, it said, we respect your choices. So women just choose what they want and then expect the midwife to give it to them. Mid New Zealand families love their midwives because they spend so much time with them. But they're not skilled. We women are not skilled in meeting the challenge of birthing our babies. There is no societal expectation in New Zealand or anywhere else in the world now that expect in families self-learned skills. Why is that? Women, all women, 100% of pregnant women are going to do the activity of birthing their baby. We should all be skilled. We should elevate this infrequent, one-off, can't be repeated 
life transforming activity into something that we should do with a high level of skills that should make common sense but it's been co-opted by a message and that message was oh women have always given birth cows and cats aren't taught to birth women don't need to be taught to birth it's instinctive women know how to birth they just need to be left alone to do it themselves and this has been cockamamie from the start first of all women are not cows and cats we have a cortex in which resides our satisfaction for being skilled. Humans thrive on being skilled. I'm skilled now talking to you. Cows and cats can't do this. You're understanding a language cows and cats do not have. We don't know what their language is, but they don't have ours. If you know how to birth your baby, fine. If you've had a great birth last time and think it can repeat itself, fine. I'm probably not talking to you. But the people I'm talking about know the truth. You do not know what your birth is going to be like, which means we should have a high level of skills to respond to how it unfolds. When we have a high level of skills, then we are working in a more clear partnership with our midwives. Our birth coach, husband, other, they should be highly skilled. Does your midwife need to know the skills you know? Not necessarily. However, it's great if you can teach her the skills that you know. She is not going to necessarily teach you the skills that she knows because the skills she knows are more about assessing, monitoring your birth, your health and well-being. So you want to know how to do this activity. What are the reasons that women end up transferring to the hospital? It is because they're not coping or they have a long first or second stage. Very few home births transfer to the hospital because there is a medically high risk problem. And that's just the reality of it. So what you want to do is to just plain become skilled so that you show your midwife that you are working competently through your home birth. She's going to delight in this. Honestly, when I gave birth in 1970 and there was a very high expectation that all families become skilled through the Lamaze period and the Bradley people, that meant everybody saw millions and millions of skilled birthing women and skilled birthing men. Skills weren't great. They were a bit, mm, eh. we could have done better. And we now can do better with birthing better because what families that develop the skills develop them to be more effective in all levels. And it's important for you to understand that. We are giving you the skills that make us competent in birth. And all of our care providers praised us. We made them as human beings more relaxed. Even when we had problems, even if we had hoses coming out of every single one of our holes and wired for sound, when we used skills to cope and manage, we negotiated better, we relaxed everybody in the room, we still could have issues, but people responded in less of a triage manner. They weren't as frightened. So skills were incredibly important. And they supported our midwives because we didn't have these long, exhausting births. And we didn't call them so early and require them to come and sit there for hours and hours and hours, taking notes or just humdy dumbing around. Because why should this human being be doing that? Have your friends come, for goodness sake. Right? So we, as a trust, as an NGO, as a not-for-profit, as a tax-exempt organization, support midwives. And we do that by telling their clients to learn skills and to use their skills when they birth their baby under their care. The way we can support the midwifery profession is to stop exhausting them honestly and they have to stop messaging themselves as the i don't know what 
what do they message themselves are is some sort of, you know, almost religious organization of midwives. They're not. They're pragmatic, practical, trained people, or else they are people in villages who have decided that they're going to go to birth. Some of them are very highly skilled. Some of them are not skilled. Some of them are respected in cultures. Some of them are not respected in cultures. In India, where there are midwives, there were the untouchable caste because they could handle waste products of the body. They weren't respected, nor did they prepare the woman for birth. Her mother and mother-in-law are female people. In, the, in Tibet, they don't have midwives. Who's ever at a birth is at a birth. So we have to stop glamorizing midwives. Midwives have to stop glamorizing themselves. The World Health Organization has ended up with a complicated set of things around them. When I was in Zimbabwe, there were TBAs, traditional birth attendants. World Health Organization didn't teach them anything about birth. They were already attending births. All they wanted them to do was to transfer women under these criteria in pregnancy and transfer them in birth under these criteria. But those criteria weren't the issues that women in the villages experienced. There are two issues. Two issues were if a woman bled too much and you couldn't get the baby out. They did not care if the baby died. They didn't want to lose a baby. They didn't want to lose a mother. There aren't many mothers giving birth in communities. Women can have more babies. That's the belief. We lost 25 to 30 percent of children globally before immunizations and antibiotics. That's why we had so many babies. If we lost a child, there was little birth control, we had more children. Times have changed. If you want to have a home birth, you do not want to transfer to the hospital unless there is a medical issue, and then please do if you can't handle it at home. Because you live in a country where you have that availability, and you should be bloody grateful for that, because there are people all over the world that do not, and babies and mothers are injured and died or injured for life because there's no help out there. If you think that every traditional midwife knows everything about birth or anything about birth, most traditional women don't know we have a cervix. In some traditional cultures, as soon as labor started, the midwives pressed on the top of the uterus. They were just trying to press the baby out. You have to understand that we have an illusion around childbirth, and you're responsible for getting real about this. The person who is your midwife is a human being. She's got a life, or he has a life. You want to respect that life. You want to be an adult. You came into pregnancy as an adult. You want to develop skills in pregnancy and preparing for birth as an adult. And as an adult, you want to use skills to work for the activity of birthing your baby. Because after the birth, you are going to be an adult who is required to take care of this baby who cannot talk to you. He or she cannot explain anything to you. You need to use skills. And when we, women are left without skills in pregnancy and men are left without skills in pregnancy, they are more nervous once the baby is born. And you hear them all the time. As soon as the baby moves, go, what's the matter? There's nothing the matter. And if you can't determine what's the matter, that's because you lack skills. So this has been a hard conversation to have with you. It's important. We at Birthing Better took our responsibility as adults, women, and men seriously. And that's why we developed these very effective skills. You can't rub them on your body. You have to learn them. You can't look at this stuff and go, oh, yeah, I know. You have to do practice until you feel, I get that. Then you don't have to practice anymore. You have to get it. Then you have to choose to use your skills. Not when things are tough, but from the beginning. You want to 
ingrain in your body your response to what is happening in your body through the use of the skills that you have learned. And you want to communicate that to the person who's helping you. And as labor progresses, as it progresses and may get more intense, you want to commit more deeply to using your skills on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And that's why Birthing Better Families will tell you when we use our skills to birth our babies, whether it's home, birth center, the side of the road, in a hospital, no matter what it is, good or bad, terrible, beautiful, whatever it is, when we are using our skills, it is like time slows down because we're very aware of our inhale, we're very aware of our exhale, we're very aware of where our body is, we're very aware of softening in our body. We're very aware of working with our baby's efforts to come down through and out our body. And when we are aware of that, we feel incredibly empowered. And we accept that what is happening to us or around us is what it is. And we use our skills to work through what it is and it will then change because we will ultimately birth our baby and what that is now changes into what that is now the then the after the birth and we continue to use our skills throughout our life because the skills keep us in the now. What is happening when you're listening to this is now. It's not the future. It's not the past. So just with me, because your midwife is not here, breathe in your nose and expand inside your pelvis. And breathe out your nose or your mouth and soften all inside your pelvis. That is being in the now. Your breath. Your body. Please don't give your power away to that wonderful woman or man who's helping you. Do not expect more of them than you should expect from anyone else. Give them the benefit of working with skilled families uplift their profession by uplifting our tasks in birthing our babies. Thanks.